Jesus Christ, John, you're not making these easier to masturbate to. Hello and welcome to this week's review. Yes, I am indeed reviewing the third entry into Jonathan Doe's erotic grotesque nonsense series, this time Defilement of a Porcelain Doll. And before you ask, no, I didn't get rid of all my movies, I was just gonna, you know, redo, reshelve my collection and make these shelves stronger. So don't worry, I haven't sold all my movies to buy methamphetamine. Not yet. I might. For the meme. But yes, first we had Barf Bunny, who was kind of a throwback to, you know, Terrible Mill and films of that nature. And then you had The Degenerates, that was kind of like August Underground, but actually entertaining? I'm not sorry about that statement. And now we have Defilement of a Porcelain Doll. I'm not sure what inspired this, but uh, John, I think you need some help. I'm worried about you. Now I'll go quickly over the movie, I don't want to spoil too much, but I'll spoil just a little, so just be warned if you're interested, I might say some spoilers. So the film starts with our actress Lil Puck. I'm not sure if that's her real name. If yes, that's a strange name, not very common around here, it might be different in California, but whatever. Lil Puck, and she plays this artist, you know, this doll maker, you could say. She's also psychotic like most artists. But unlike most artists who are just narcissistic, she's literally psychotic. Like, you know, she might have murdered people, might have, we're not sure. The film starts with her looking at Polaroid's picture of uh, women with like these, you know, these mouths that keep your mouth open. It's either a BDSM thing or, you know, a family-friendly board game, I guess. I. Hey, little Timmy, you know what would be fun? Putting this BDSM tool in your mouth and try to say words. Ha ha ha. You're adopted. She looks at those pictures and she's uh, very turned on by all of this. By the way, I can't show anything from this movie, so don't ask me why. So, you know, she starts finger blasting herself. And then the pictures get more and more disturbed. She's also dressed as a leather mommy. Won't explain what that is. Anyways, when she's done her business, fingering herself, we get the reveal that she kidnapped the second actress in this film, the lovely Felicia Fisher, who's back again in the EGN trilogy. And it's very interesting, because if you've watched Barf Bunny and The Degenerates, you can realize that her pubic hair is getting longer and longer. Which makes me think that the ENG films are all related, and this is the same character as the bunny and the psychotic killer. And you know, she just, you know, she just doesn't care about her pubic hair, because she's running away from the authority after murdering and having sex with a corpse. And then she got kidnapped by somebody more psychotic than her. Is that what you did there, John? So the rest of the film will be told in these chapters, and every chapter is a way that Lil Puck tortures Felicia Fisher. And torture in, you know, a fetish way. She doesn't like literally like ply her nails out or, you know, take out her teeth, but you know, she tries to make her into a porcelain doll. And there's even an actual porcelain doll that oversees this, and Lil Puck is kind of mentally not there, and she talks to that porcelain doll. So I'm not bothered personally by any of the content, however, there are Two things usually in films that actually disturb me, you could say. One of them are needles. I don't like needles, I don't like seeing close-ups of needles in arms, I usually hide my eyes. And the other one is people having conversations with inanimate objects. I don't know why that always creeped me out in movies, especially when they're porcelain dolls. That makes it even creepier. So, like I said, it's told in chapters, and every chapter gets grosser and grosser and weirder and more fetishistic? Fetishistic? Anyways, it goes from worse to worse until the ending kind of crescendo where everything blows up and you're like, what did I watch? And in between that, there are wonderful, magnificent scenes. One of them, I just burst out laughing out loud. Little Puck puts like the, the cone 
like you would put around the neck of a dog on Felicia Fisher. And then she starts, you know, calling her a beautiful flower. And then she takes the thing that, you know, you put water in to, you know, water your plants. Again, I don't know the word, I'm French. And then instead of putting water to, you know, grow bloom the flower of Felicia Fisher, she pisses in it and just sprays it. I don't know why that made me laugh. My other favorite part of the film is again, Felicia Fisher is just great at playing this asshole brat. And whenever she goes into it with little Puck, it just makes me laugh. Both of them are great at, you know, giving each other shit and it's hilarious. Lil Puck's character gets more and more annoyed at Felicia and then she cuts out her pubic hair and shoves it in her mouth. And that just, again, that just made me, that just made me laugh. And that kind of brings me into uh, the parts I didn't really like about the film. First things first, it's way too long. It's 98 minutes. There is no real reason why, especially because after a while it gets repetitive. You have Lil Puck playing around with Felicia, taking pictures on her Polaroid camera, you know, and then afterwards looking at the Polaroids and then next scene. It really does kind of get repetitive, especially for 98 minutes. And I feel like one of the film's best asset isn't utilized to her fullest. And I'm of course talking about Felicia. Now, she has a lot of assets and one of them is used quite well again john thank you i barf bunny wasn't enough you needed more puke in there but what i'm talking about is felicia's just natural ability to be hilarious what i mean by that is lil puck's character understandably gets annoyed at felicia and she drugs her and then restrains her from talking which is a mistake in my opinion because she comes up with hilarious lines as we saw in Barf Bunny and the Degenerates and muting her kind of takes away from what made those two films fun. However, all of those are excused by the gruesome, strange ending that you just sit there and ask yourself what you've been doing with your entire life. I don't know what I have been doing, but why am I here? So, what did I think of Defilement of a Porcelain Doll? Well, I really liked it, and I think if you've enjoyed John's previous two films, The Degenerates and Barf Bunny, you have to do yourself a favor and, you know, complete the trilogy. For right now, I don't know if he has plans to release more of them, but I would hope so because up to this point I've really enjoyed all of them. However, this one was probably my personal least favorite. The running time is too long and I've already discussed my problems with the film, but I still liked it and I still, you know, I still bought it and I would recommend everybody who liked his two previous films to do the same. And I also hope Dead format makes a VHS of it because I need the third one to complete my ENG VHS collection. So this has been a spooky celluloid and I wish you a spooky week. Yark, that was disgusting. Why am I so cringe? Speaking of cringe, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'm gonna go hang myself now.